we were talking about the money multiplier, and it's one divided by the required observed ratio. So in this case, the ratio is 10%, so one divided by 0.1. Again, don't need to go through your calculator. That means a dime goes in a dollar 10 times. And that's how I knew it's going to go to 9,000. What I did is I took 10 times your excess reserves up here, and that gives me the money creation down here. So all these, if you look, go back to the table, all these rounds depend on that ratio of 10%. If the ratio was 20%, you can see the first round, that would have been 800, that would have been 200, and all these numbers would, would, would have been lower. If the number was 5%, then that would have been 950, that would have been 50, and all these numbers would be higher. So if the ratio goes up, that's going to drive down the money multiplier. MM goes down. And if the ratio gets dropped, that's going to increase the money multiplier. You can see right now the Federal Reserve has a tool they can use that changes bank reserves and changes the money multiplier. So they have some way, mechanism, to control monetary growth. Uh, ratio is 5%. That would be 1 over 0 0.05, not 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is 50%. And a nickel goes into a dollar 20 times. So that meant that if the ratio was 5%, this number here would have been 18,000, twice as much. That shows you the power of this required reserve ratio. If it's 2%, that's 1 over 0 0.02. 2 cents goes into a dollar 50 times. So 50 times 900 would give us $45,000 here. And at 20%, that's 1 over 0 0.2. 20 cents goes in a dollar five times. And so five times 900 would have made that number there 4,500. Now, this is the potential maximum change in M1. This is not going to happen in reality. We're not going to get the 9,000 there. Uh, the, this, is the, this is the simplest mul money multiplier equation there is. Just like with the spending multiplier, we're using, the, we're using a very simple version of the money multiplier. If you look at the Federal Reserve, you look at uh, uh, UCLA, Cal Berkeley, their, uh, their think tanks, their economics departments, when they do the forecasting, they have very complex money multipliers. They factor in a lot of other things. We're assuming those things aren't going to happen here. So just understand that this is simply a a, uh, the potential maximum we can possibly get. We're not going to get this in reality. But it's one way to convey how the money creation process happens to students and not get bogged down in a very complex money multiplier. In fact, there are three things that I've done in this table that I'm assuming are simply not true. And uh, instead of telling you, um, let, me, let me do this. Let's, let me offer you an extra credit assignment. Uh, so there are three things I assumed in this table that are not true that I made these numbers, this number here, larger than it should be, the 9,000. So why don't you, uh, the first people who make postings on the course form, if you make a posting on the course form um, that tells me what I'm assuming are, are not true to make this number 9,000 when it should be lower, I'll give you extra credit. Uh, let's say for each one of the three things I'm assuming, I'll give you five points. So whoever comes up uh, with uh, each one of those first on the form, I will give you five points extra credit. Okay. And then once, in the, oh, let's say, uh, uh, what do you want, deadline? Uh, let's say, I don't know, maybe by, uh, well, who, no, the first one. Yeah, the first one, there's no, no, no deadline. The first one who does that get, gets points. Now, how do we use the money multiplier? Well, here's an equation right here. This is going to be used on the quizzes. In fact, we have the question on the um, section 3 homework. When I asked you for the potential increase in the money supply, that's what you use right here. So in the case we had up here, the money multiplier we calculated was 10. The initial amount of reserves from that deposit was 900, right? So the potential increase in the money supply would be 10 times 900 or 
And that's why I knew that number there is going to be 9,000. We started with 1,000. We ended up with 9,000 more for a total of 10,000. Here's a test question. And this is exactly what I have in the homework as well. This will be on the test. Focus should stay. I'm not sure why it's changing on me. So here I give you, this is similar to the example we had earlier, except I add in two more questions down here. So now we have our uh, bank uh, deposit, demand deposits of $20 million. And that's been split up in these different categories. Some has been loaned out, some has been kept. What's been kept? Uh, the vault cash of $2 million and the deposit of the Fed of $3 million. So their total reserves would be $2 million of vault cash plus $3 million on deposit with the Fed. Call it a Fed deposit. What's the required reserves? Go to liabilities. We use the liabilities here, the demand deposits. So you take the required reserve ratio, it's given at 5%. And so your required reserves would be 5%, 0 0.05, times your deposits of 20 million. Oops. If it was 10%, that'd be 2 million, right? So 5% is half a 10, that'd be 1 million. And do we have enough reserves? Yeah, we do. We have more than enough, so we have excess. So your total reserves, you take away your required, and that'll be your excess. And so that would be uh, 3 million of total reserves, minus 1 million of required, and that leaves 2 million of excess. Question down for D, how much money can this bank legally loan out right now? Think about it, how much can they loan out? The 2 million. By definition, the only money a bank can legally loan out at any point in time is the excess reserves. So last question, determine the money creating potential of this bank. Well, we want to take the money multiplier, times that by our, our excess reserves, and that'll be the answer. And this would be the change in M1. So we need a, the money multiplier, and the money multiplier is 1 over the required reserve ratio, which is 5% in this case, and a nickel goes in $1.20. That's 20. We determine excess reserves at 2 million. So if it was 1 million, that'd be $20 million. 2 million makes it $40 million. So the answer is, if this bank loans out all the excess reserves, it can generate at most $40 million of new money in the system. And that would be all the rounds of the uh, banking activities of deposits and loans, deposits and loans. Well, those are a lot of parts, and that's the end of Lecture 1. Uh, lecture 2, we're going to look at uh, the Federal Reserve.